How you doing? I'm back for another one. Just thought I'd do a prophecy update of today, what's coming next, what I believe is coming next, but I kind of want to go backwards over some things that I talked about, some things that I kind of predicted that maybe may be wrong about, but I'm going to I'm going to need your help on these things um, in your comments. For those of you that are waiting for um, this part three of the angelic race on earth before Adam, um, I'm about 75% done. It's really good, man. It was a lot better than I thought it would be. It's really good. It's really anointed. The Lord really blessed me and helped me through that. And all God be the glory. Um, so, um, anyways, uh, that's going to be probably... Uh, it could be a week to two to three weeks. It all depends with everything I got going on. But uh, I really want to get that finished up and get that out to you as soon as possible. Um, so uh, let's begin. I want to go to uh, Matthew chapter 24 and I want to talk about uh, how I believe Matthew chapter 24 is in line with the sixth, uh, the, the sixth chapter of the book of Revelation. Okay, with the seals. Okay. Uh, for those of you that have watched my video called Pre-Trib, Post-Trib, Mid-Trib, False Mentalities, uh, this is an update on it. Uh, if you haven't seen that, I'll put a link in the description. You can check that out too. But um, there's some things I kind of want to re want to I want to re go over because the Lord has shown me new things. Okay, I'm not indoctrinated to where I'm stuck on a teaching, and that's what it's always going to be. If I'm wrong about something. Um, I'm open-minded to it. There's been a couple of things the Lord corrected me on. I don't think I've been completely off on a lot of things. I believe I'm pretty right on most of the stuff the Lord's been showing me. But there's some tweaking and some things that I've had to go over and consider. Um, so I'm kind of going over it in a way. Um, so um, uh, this is pretty much about uh, the season of his return. No man knows the hour of the day. Uh, of the return of Jesus for his church, but I believe he gives us uh, the seasons all the way up to the door of his return, okay? I believe we can get the seasons. I believe he's given us the exact seasons and times according to the signs uh, and that we can get those without pinpointing a day and a time, okay? A date as far as the return of the Lord goes. So, um, let's go to, um, um, Let's go to Matthew 24 real quickly here. See how fast, how far I can go over this. If you got some suggestions or whatever, we're going to go to Matthew 24. I'm in Revelation 13. Okay, I'm going to Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. Got a slow phone here. Uh, starting at uh, verse 3. We're going to read v verse 3 to 26. All right. Now I believe not all the chapters in the Bible are in chronological order. There are a few that are in the book of Revelation. I believe Revelation uh, 3, 4, 5, and 6, and 7 are in order. Um, I believe... Um, that not all chapters are in order, uh, but I do believe, I say that for the sake of this, I believe that when you're reading a chapter verse, line upon line, and precept upon precept, it's all in chronological order, for the most part, okay? So, verse 3, And as he said upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? The sign of thy coming and of the end of the world. Okay, Jesus answered, and Jesus said, Take heed that no man deceive you. It's the first thing he comes up, okay, which is the first thing that, uh, <laughs> which is the first thing that Paul said in Thessalonians, uh, when there was a letter brought to the Thessalonian church that the day of the Lord for his church has er ha was already at hand, Paul says, be, don't, don't, be not deceived of any letter that appears to be written by me by the Spirit that that day has already came. That day will not come except there be a falling away first, then the man of sin be revealed. And then the, okay, so it's about the time of the coming of the 
Antichrist in the temple that Jesus will come for his church. Jesus said that in Matthew 24 here we're about to read. When you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, look up, your redemption draws nigh. One grinding at the, at the meal, one taking the other left. Uh, when you, uh, telling the Jewish people to flee to the wilderness, and I'll tell you why. Okay, because I believe they missed the rapture. They witnessed the rapture, get saved, but as a result, they go into the wilderness fleeing from the beast system. I'll get all into that, and I really believe that um, there's some good accuracy here. Just follow with me here. I really believe that I'm hearing from the Lord. Verse 5, For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. I believe this is false prophets, pastors, teachers, ministers, a false form of Christianity. As you know, there's so much weird stuff going on around there. So much, so many strange doctrines going on out there like we've never heard or seen before. Heck, nobody even wants to use the name Jesus in their teaching anymore. They use all these other names, which is okay. Um, as <laughs> long as it goes back to the man who died on the cross, the Son of the living God, Jesus Christ, Yeshua, Yahweh. Okay, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and deceive many. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, that you be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is yet. But the end is not yet. Okay, all these things shall come to pass, but the end. You know, we, you and I have uh, have both been seen. Um, verse seven: For the nation shall rise against nations, and kingdoms against kingdoms, and there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. All these things are the beginning of sorrows. Now you have not. Ever since Christ rose from the dead, after three days, there's always been these things. But you and I can agree in the past decade, we've been seeing these things like never before. Okay, so we believe, so this is, I believe, this is the first tribulation, which also in the Greek is persecution, which ISIS started that, you know, which there's still persecution going on in the Middle East, even though a, a vast majority of them is, is defeated. Uh, at least for right now. We're not sure yet. Okay, but let me keep going. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be killed, and, so, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Okay. The first persecution. Tribulation. Okay. Tribulation is persecution. All right. Not complete, utter destruction in its entirety. Not yet, because... Remember, at this time, they're eating and drinking and marrying and partying and living it up, taking the mark of the beast. We're going we're gonna to find that out a little bit further as we go. Right now, we're taking, uh, we're, we're, we're looking at history, or I'm sorry, uh, we're looking at prophecy. And now, as I keep reading, we're going a little bit farther down the line here, okay? And many false prophets shall arise and deceive many, because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold, Okay? The Bible says there'll be scoffers in the last day, lovers of themselves, boastful, prideful, arrogant, disobedient, the parents, so on and so forth. Timothy says that in the last days, many shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, huh? uh, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience here with a hot iron. So we know that's part of it, because it says, but I want you to look at this. Many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. I believe this is a false form of Christianity, not just those claiming to be prophets or in the office of prophets uh, because iniquity shall abound the love of many shall wax cold okay but he that endures to the end the same shall be saved okay see that is the biggest sign of the falling away is division hatred bitterness I've been seeing hatred and bitterness and divisions in churches like I've never seen in the past six seven years but he that shall endure to the end the same shall be saved and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached the gospel of love. Okay, but he who endures at the end, he who doesn't get bitter in heart. That's what he's talking about here. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached unto all the world for witness unto the nations, and then shall the end come. Okay, when you go back in Thessalonians, on my last video, where I talked about how there be falling away, the man of, sin, man of sin be revealed, to keep reading, it talks about, but he who now restraineth will restrain until he be revealed in his time. In other words, I believe that's a clear picture in Thessalonians of the beast system and the Antichrist prematurely trying to come on the scene ahead of time. I believe this is why the election was so, this last election was so, uh, was so uh, intensifying because the globalist system, they, uh, they needed a Democrat, and in my opinion, they needed one more term in order to complete what the, uh, the global agenda started in order to bring about a new one world order. I mean, uh, 
Uh, if you look at Henry Kissinger and a few others, even they said they thought that Obama was going to be able to bring about a new one world order. It's all there in the research, right there in the media. I've got the video clips. It's all there. It's all plain truth hidden in plain sight. And um, so my point is this system of seven heads and ten horns, this new one world order has been restrained or postponed until the man of sin be revealed in his time according to the scriptures okay all right the gospel why for the preaching of the gospel to get out to all nations once the very last person that receives salvation once the gospel reaches to the very last soul that's going to get saved the gospel has to be fully preached I think this is what that means until the gospel is reached to the very last soul that's going to get saved when you that verse 15 when you therefore shall see so once that happens, the end will come as far as the, the wrath of God goes, I believe. I don't believe that the Antichrist marks the end of time. It's the wrath of God that marks the end of time, the dispensation of the fullness of times. Okay, and I'll get into that a little bit more. When you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by the prophet Daniel standing in the holy place, there will be a third temple. Okay? It will be built. The Bible says, Thessalonians says, it says right here, Matthew 24, that the Antichrist will stand in a holy place, a temple. So there will be a building of the third temple. Okay? It will bring a great deception. And I'm going to get into that. When you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by the prophet Daniel, standing in the holy place, whosoever readeth, let him understand. Verse 16. Then let him which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. In other words, get off the grid. Don't be a part of what's about to go down. This idol worship, the beast system, the anti worship of the beast and the Antichrist is gonna, it's gonna take place here in Israel. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. Verse 19. Woe to them which are with child, to them that give suck in those days. In other words, those who are breastfeeding, as I mentioned before, he's coming for the babies. Verse 21. For then shall there be great tribulation, such as not since the beginning of this world to this time, nor ever shall be. Notice that the appearing of the Antichrist standing in the temple, there will be even greater tribulation, greater persecution, like never known before. Okay. And look at verse 22. And except those days be shortened. What days? The days of the persecution of the Antichrist. And except those days be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. That's when Christ said to be one grinding at the mill, one taken, one, one in the field, the other left. You know the story. Luke 21 speaks the same line upon line, but it says a little bit different. And this account, it uses it. It uses the same, um, it's talking about the same story. Okay, then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, there is Christ, or there, believe it not. When Antichrist comes standing in the temple, he will claim to be the Messiah. And many people in Israel will claim, they will make a covenant with him, and claim that, and will believe that he's the Messiah. Jesus says, believe it not. Keep going. For there shall rise false Christ and false prophets, and shall show you great signs and wonders, that if it were possible, that ye shall deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you this already. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chamber. Believe it not. He who? Jesus Christ. So I really believe the Antichrist is going to claim to be the Messiah. Okay. Let's go to verse 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and he shall sin. I'm sorry. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in great clouds of heaven with great power and glory, and he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from heaven from the four uh from the four ends of heaven to to the other now learn a parable of the fig tree okay this is a crunch time statement but i'm gonna leave that alone for right now i'm gonna go back to verse 29 
immediately after the tribulation of those days. <laughs> because you have the tribulation, you have the wrath of God, too. Also, tribulation. Okay? But it's saying the tribulation of those days. I mean, what marks the end of the tribulation of those days? Well, when the rapture takes place and everyone's... The, and all the Christians and believers and people are being persecuted for, and being beheaded for not taking the mark of the beast. There'll be no one left to persecute. There'll be no more, uh, 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 the, the accuser will be cast down, so to speak. <laughs> oh, Jesus. I'll get into that a little bit later. Immediately after the tribulation of those days. Now, it talks about the, the moon shall not give her a light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Okay, talks about the, you know, it's the same description given in Revelations, the sixth chapter. Okay, it talks about the moon not giving her light. It talks about all the nations mourning for Christ when they see him, when he comes. And it talks about the parable of the fig tree. It said, now learn the parable of the fig tree when forth when, when his branches is yet tender and put his forth leaves, know you now that summer is nigh. In other words, just as the uh, just as the uh, the branch is tender and starts to bud and goes into a full blown, summer is nigh. It's a crunch time statement. So when everything is fulfilled concerning the uh, the church age goes, but this is the same thing you see in Revelation chapter six. Okay, the only thing it leaves out, see, there's four scriptures that speak strongly of the moon becoming red as, um, becoming black as sackcloth and ashes, and the moon becoming red as blood. It's not four different blood moons or four different four different events. It's all talk about one particular day. Okay, <laughs> mentioned they both mention the fig tree. The only thing that Revelation chapter six doesn't mention is the angels gathering the elect, which I believe is the rapture. Okay, after the tribulation of the persecution, the rapture ending the persecution of Christians because those days was cut short and because of the elect's sake, remember? One grinding at the meal, the other left, the other taken. The rapture, a lot of Christians are going to be deceived when the rapture doesn't take place when they thought it will take place. And then here comes the Antichrist and the beast system persecuting Christians. Okay, that's really going to cause the church to get their act together. It's going to cause a lot of people to come into the kingdom, too. A lot of people are going to become Christians because of this and reject this beast system. That's the fullness of Gentiles. Paul spoke about that to provoke the Jew to recognize their Messiah. The 144,000. So let's go to Revelation chapter 6. Now I'm going to go back to uh, some things a little bit later. Revelation chapter 6, and I saw... When the Lamb had opened one of the seals, and I heard as it were the noise of a thunder of the four beasts, saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat was a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. Now there's some stuff I want to talk about these four horsemen of the apocalypse. For the longest time, I believe the first horseman was already released, which is the leader of the new one world order, the Antichrist, a picture of a man working behind the scenes. Daniel describes the seven heads and ten horns coming together, and then suddenly the little horn rises up in the midst of them. You see what I'm saying? So, for the longest time, I believe that we had already passed that. Remember, fallen away, man is said to be revealed, but then he's being restrained until he's fully revealed in his time. I believe that the wiser four horsemen in the, uh, in the sixth chapter within the seals, I believe it takes... These are people of nations, of kings that are working with the new one world order. Daniel talks about the four beasts working with the new one world order, working behind the scenes, causing all the chaos to bring destruction, to bring about a new one world order because Americans and the people of this world are, in their mind, too small-minded to govern their own affairs. And they must eventually bow down before what they claim to be a most powerful sovereign. <laughs> Does that sound familiar? So ordinary men and women are too small minded to govern their own affairs. That order and progress can only come when individuals surrender their rights to an all powerful sovereign. 
It takes four horsemen to finally bring it to pass, because if you keep reading after the fourth horseman, suddenly Christians are being beheaded for their testimony. Wow. Wow, sounds like the beast is finally on the scene of seven heads and ten horns. <laughs> uh, the Antichrist is finally here. Okay. Now, I need your help with these four horsemen of the apocalypse. Because if the fourth, if the first horseman is the Antichrist, I thought the second one was ISIS. I thought the, I thought the um, going forth um, to kill with the sword, it was given power by the first horse. I said in my last video, I didn't think it was a coincidence that ISIS ended up with $150 million in weaponry. <laughs> it was given power by the first horse. Uh, the third horse I had mentioned was the wealth and the beast of ISIS, uh, the beast system. Uh, Perry Stone, if you know who that is, he thought that too, and I kind of felt that way too. But as you know, ISIS is somewhat defeated for the most part. Uh, would they be back? I don't know. But then you have the last horseman of the... That pale imagery, I thought was nuclear destruction. I thought that was, I thought that was uh, North Korea starting a World War III, and so many of us thought that too. But it seems like there's a lot of silence right now. It seems like nothing's really happening now. Did we in fact pass by the first seal? Is the first seal? I'm sorry. Is the first horseman, the Antichrist, going for conquering and conquer behind the scenes, or is that a picture of a man? who is in the temple already, going forth, conquering the conquer. I need your help on that. I've been really praying and seeking God on that. Because either we're approaching the fourth horseman, or we are approaching the first one. I know by the revelation and conviction of the Holy Spirit that the beast and the false prophet is on the, is, is on the earth today. Okay, As we know, all the signs are here. Okay. But let's keep going. Let's skip that for right now. I want to go all the way down to... Uh, <sighs> I want to go down to the sixth seal. Because I believe that the rapture will happen in, at the end of the sixth seal. Causing a, a uh, earthquake that is so great and violent and shakes the entire planet. The biggest, uh, the biggest earthquake the earth can experience. Verse 12, Revelation 6, verse 12. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood, and the stars fell from heaven unto the earth, even as a fig tree casts forth her, her, her untimely figs when she is shaken up of a mighty wind. Okay, there goes that fig tree revelation again. And the heavens departed as a scroll when it... And the heavens departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of her place. I believe this is the rapture of the church. And the moment of a twinkle of an eye, we will all be caught up with him. But I believe that Christ will come in his glory in the air. He won't step foot on the earth yet until his third coming. We'll meet him in the air, and I believe all will look upon him and see him, even the 144,000, and they that pierced him will look upon him whom they pierced, and they will mourn for him. I believe they will get saved at that point. They will say the Christians were right. He really was the Messiah. And then all of a sudden, uh, that's when um, that's when the, the, the seven heads and ten horns turns against Israel and overtakes the uh, uh, overtakes uh, Israel because of that, because they're, because because they had a covenant, and it was God's will that they should fulfill His will, because it's God's will for this to happen, and set up the image worship that's given to the beast. And because of that, they flee into the wilderness, which I'm going to get into that. Just hold off with me here. And the heavens departed as a scroll, when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places, and the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and free man, hid themselves in the dens of the rocks, of the mountains, and said to the mountains, and rocks, fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, and hide us from the wrath of the Lamb, for that great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? This sounds like the wrath of God. I believe that they think it's the wrath of God when they see him. You have to understand something. You have to understand why the heavens were rolled up as a scroll. Because just as you see the stars at night, but they get their light from the sun. But when the sun comes out during the day, the sun is so bright, it darkens the light of the stars. 
I believe when Jesus comes back for his church in his glorified body and meets us in the air, he's going to be in his glory. It's going to be so bright and powerful. It's going to be such a light that's literally going to shock people. It's going to blind the heavens, the stars, the sun. It's going to cause people to, uh, I had, in fact, I dreamt of the rapture. The sky and the air turned. It turned blue and it turned glorious and it turned, it was very bright. I remember seeing the vision of the rapture. I believe it will happen. All this will happen in our time. Jesus said in Matthew 24, the generation that sees these things shall not pass until they come to pass. And they thought it was the wrath of God and the wrath of the Lamb. During this time, the sun is darkened and the moon not give her light. It's red as blood, remember? And they thought it was the wrath of the Lamb. But I'll prove to you that when that happens, the sun is dark as black as sackcloth and the moon not give her light. <laughs> I'll prove to you that because of that, that it's not the wrath of God just yet. But it's the last seal. All the seals have to be broken before God will pour out his wrath. And it's at the end of the seals, he comes for his church, and then the angels get ready to pour out the wrath. Just follow with me. Let's go to Joel chapter 2, verse 31. Joel chapter 2, verse 31. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and the, and the terrible day comes. <laughs> okay, so we see that this will all happen and take place before the wrath of God comes. Okay, now let's go back to it. I want to bless you. I'm not done blessing you. I'm going to confirm everything I'm saying with so much scripture that comes together. I know I'm hearing from God. I believe the Holy Spirit gave us these scriptures for them to be revealed to us. Thank you, Holy Ghost. So let's go back to, in fact, Revelation chapter 6 and 7 is in order, and I can prove it to you. Okay, Revelation chapter 6, at the end of it, remember, let's look at chapter 7 starting at verse 1. That's why, John, that's why the writer writes, after these things. After what? What's he talking about? If it wasn't an order, how would we know what things he's talking about, right? So these are in order. Because the next chapter after this event, the last seal is broken, which is the seventh seal, which the angels begin to pour out the wrath of God. This is why the church had to be removed. And the 144,000 left behind had to have a seal of God on their forehead so the wrath of God don't fall upon them, but those who took the mark of the beast. After these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds on the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor the trees, nor any seas. In other words, don't touch a hair of the planet. Don't touch nothing. And I saw another angel. And I saw another angel sending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth, and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servant of God, the servants of God, of our God, in their foreheads, until we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. Verse 4, And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and they were sealed the 144,000 of all of the tribe of the children of Israel. Now, all of Israel is not all Israel, but the 144,000. There's still over 6 million Jews who will give in to the beast system. Now, I will prove that to you in Scripture later on, that the Scripture shows you not all is Israel is Israel, even though he's a Jew outwardly. But he that is sanctified by the Spirit, he who has received... I'll get into that later. I don't want to bring any confusion, but the Scripture makes very plain that only the 144,000 is true Israel. Okay, So just bear with me a little bit here. So he goes into the different the, the tribes. He goes into the uh, uh, 12, 1,200 out of the tribe of uh, uh, 12,000 out of the tribe of Judah, Reuben, Asher, uh, uh, Simeon, and uh, 
So after the, after he goes into the names, he says, After this I beheld, this is John the Revelator, when he was called up to the throne and shown those things which must be hereafter. After the seals. <laughs> I'll get into that a little bit later. Uh, that, um, I'll talk about Revelations 4 and 5. And I'll tell you what it really is. After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude which no man could number of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the land clothed with white robes and palms in their hands and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts and, the, and fell before the throne. They all worship God. Okay, you see of all kindreds and tongues and nations suddenly appearing before the throne. Okay, and verse 13 says, And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes? And whence cometh they? Where they come from? They wasn't here a minute ago. <laughs> are you seeing what I'm saying? Glory to God. Look at this. And I said... And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said unto me, These are they which come out of great tribulation. I prove to you, not a pre-trib, post-trib, mid-trib, or whatever those meant. I've listened to all the teachings on those things. And that one person can come out and say that the rapture happens in the midst of the great tribulation, ending the great tribulation of the persecution of Antichrist, because it says these are they which come out of great tribulation. It's right there in the word of God, folks. These are they which come out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. See, the church here, this is the man-child that was caught up to its throne to escape the dragon, <laughs> where the seed of Israel... Uh, the 144,000 fled into the wilderness, which she had a place prepared of God that they should feed her there. Uh, 1,200 and three score. Anyways, I got a video on that too, on the 144,000. I got a video on Revelation chapter 12. I'm not talking about constellations of the stars. and No, no, no. I, I give you the real storyline. Revelation chapter 12. I put a link in the description. You really got to check it out. Okay. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve Him day and night. So we see here a clear picture. And I'll prove to you that this is happening within the seals. Let's look at chapter 8, which also is in chronological order with these, with these chapters. Chapter 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was... Hmm... The last seal is opened up here. And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven... About the space of a half an hour. <laughs> but the rapture took about a half an hour to really gather them all up and get them all clothed and seated and get them all. I mean, come on. When the rapture takes place, there's, there's going to be a holy hush in heaven. All those in heaven just in a holy awe saying, wow. They're here now. All those whose family members who were beheaded for the cause of Christ, waiting for their brethren who overcome the world's flesh and the devil and the beast system by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. And I saw the seventh angel stood before God, and then that were given the seven trumpets, and another angel stood at the altar, talks about the prayers of the saints. Well, this shows that there are saints on the earth. No, no, no. These are the saints that were raptured up. Their prayers are ready to be answered. The angels are getting ready. Because remember, in the sixth seal, if you read just past the fourth horseman, when they were being beheaded, the ones in heaven cried for the revenge to be taken out upon them because of because of because of the because of their blood. And it was told of them, wait a little while <laughs> until their servants is. You got, it's all right there in the scriptures. I see the order in plain sight. Okay. And now, according to this verse, it's being fulfilled. The wrath is getting ready to be poured out. In this chapter, the first angel sounds and pours out the first wrath. I believe at this time, Elijah, which will come and restore all things, will gather the 144,000 in the wilderness and bring them back to their place. They're given two wings of a great eagle. I believe that's speaking of the two witnesses. I don't want to get into all that right now. Just follow with me, okay? Let's go. Let me prove to you. 
let's get rid of this pre-trip rapture that the rapture takes place in Revelation chapter 4 and 5 and then these things let me go back and show you something after I showed you Revelation chapter 7 already let me go back and show you something real quick let me uh, a new discovery that I found and memorizing these two verses Revelation chapter chapter um, 4 So Paul, uh, so John the Revelator on Isle Patmos, he's pretty much done writing his letters to the seven churches of Asia in his time. And I don't believe that that's was letters was given to, to symbolize every last church because there are some problems and some things that are taking place in today's churches that was not addressed in within the seven churches of Asia. So I'm just going to leave that alone for right now. After this, okay... I looked, and behold, a door is open in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was, as it were, of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. After what? I will show thee things which must be here, and then after the seals. That's the proper comp. Let me prove to you that that's the proper comp context. And I will show thee things which must be here, after here and then after the seven seals because remember in the seventh chapter it said and after this i seen and let me prove this to you that this is two different events that take place remember he was caught up to the throne by the spirit in the spirit and he saw these things if you look at revelations the fourth chapter here and the fifth chapter you'll see a throne of 24 elders which i got a video on who the 24 elders is there's a link in the description check that out too these 24 elders are all tenders and they are people of the scripture notes in the fifth chapter that these elders are of, are of people of kinders and tongues and nations, not the church. If you go back in the Old Testament, Exodus, you'll see that you'll see me breaking down this a little bit more clearly, clearly in the book of, um, I'm sorry, in, in my teaching called the, Who Are the 24 Elders? God chose 24 elders of all kinders and tongues and nations back in. Moses' time to represent the people of um, and they they were known as the first fruits that went up when Christ went up in when Christ resurrected on, from the dead all those that were in the grave came up with him including the 24 elders and I break that down perfectly clear to you that that's what that is and you can see it the scriptures are all there word for word folks ain't been reading the Bible man I don't know what's going on nowadays but uh they're reading the Bible, but they're reading what they want to read. But anyways, so you see a picture of here of just elders and Revelations 4 and 5, just elders and innumerable company of angels in chapter 4 and 5, okay? The Lamb comes on the scene, is found worthy to open the seals in chapter 5. Chapter 5, oh, no one was found worthy but the Lamb, so he opens the seals... And um, this isn't John going into the future on the day of the Lord of the rapture because no one was found worthy to open the seals with Jesus. So this event actually took place. Jesus opened those seals already or we wouldn't have them and revealed them to John live time in his day. That's when it happened because it says in Revelation chapter 4, I didn't have no notes. This is came to me in chapter 5. It said, a lamb as it had been slain. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> okay? So, it wasn't something that takes place in the future. After the rapture, or how, otherwise, how would we know <laughs> what's in the seals if they haven't happened yet until the rapture takes place? So, Revelations 4 and 5 is not a picture of the rapture or the church in heaven. It's just a picture of the 24 elders and a multitude of angels with the lamb standing by the throne at the throne and the four beasts. Look at that carefully in your own time. You don't see them there. But when you go over to the seventh chapter, after these things, what things? 
See, Revelation chapter 4, it says, And I will show thee things which must be here after. He showed him things that were here, and he saw the picture of the throne and elders and the beasts, but no saints. And then after the seals, you see a picture. Watch this. And after these things, I saw four angels. Remember, after the sealing of the 144,000 left behind. After this, I behold a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and tongues and people stood before the throne and before the Lamb. Do you see what I'm saying? Do you see it? Cried with a lot. One of the elders said, Which are these? Where they come from? You see what I'm saying, folks? Revelation. <laughs> There's been so much great deception and misteaching on this topic, on these topics, that because you have this mentality of something else in your mind, there's no room to, or even uh, a temptation to not even study it out for yourself and to find out if they were wrong. I mean, if I were to sit here and go, dun 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 Sanford and Sons, right? That you, you saw that show, show years, years back. Man, you probably haven't saw that show in over 20-something years, but the minute I sing the song, it's that deep that you remember it like that, or da na 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 Batman, I mean, just like false teaching and false doctrine that were preached way back in the day that runs so deep, there is so much room for deception. Okay? We gotta search the scriptures. Holy Spirit dealt with me a little over a year ago saying, I want you to study the book of Revelation. I'm like, okay. Because I used to be in the pre-trib raps. <laughs> I used to be uh, you know, pre-trib believer. Okay. I know a lot of anointed preachers that believe that too. So, according to this scripture, the church is going to see the Antichrist. He's coming back for a church without spot or blemish. I don't see that church right now. But it will be, as many people reject the beast system and cry to the Lord, cry out to the Lord. <sighs> so will the church shine at her persecutions? But anyways, so what I want to do is, as I revealed all of this revelation here, it's all in the scriptures, in the proper context, by the Spirit as He's revealed it unto me. I want to take a look at uh, what's going to take place. If the church is going to see Antichrist, the beast system is going to be here. The mark of the beast, which God said he would save us from the hour of trial that's coming upon the earth. That means we have to be here in order to be saved from it. Those days will cut short. Watch and pray that you may be counted worthy to escape those things. Watch and pray that you do not fall into temptation to take the mark of the beast. Folks, let's go to Isaiah chapter 9. Isaiah chapter 9. There are countless, there's over 600 Jews in Israel. So many of them believe that their Messiah is coming. Okay, They're looking at the scriptures in the Old Testament that say Messiah is coming, not realizing that he not only came, but they crucified him to the cross and becoming Antichrist. Oh, Jesus. Then the, then the denieth not Jesus come in the flesh is Antichrist. These aren't his. But the 144,000, there's a big deception that's coming from Israel. Nobody's talking about it. Oh, Jesus. Let's, let's take a look at this real quick. I want to lay down a prophetic uh, foundation here. Okay, Messiah has came and Jews were deceived and will be, be deceived again. Let's look at this. Re uh, Isaiah chapter 9, chapter 9, verse 6. These are the scriptures that they're looking at here. Okay. I'm going to go over some scriptures to help you to understand. I'm going to go over a lot of scriptures, so bear with me, because if I don't do this, you're not going to understand what I'm about to say. I very much support Israel, the 144,000, and I'm praying for the 144,000. For unto us a child is born, unto us is given, a son is given, and the government shall rest upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counsel, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Prince of Peace. Okay, they're looking at these scriptures. Let me show you some more scriptures here they're looking at. Isaiah chapter 49, verse 6. And he said, it is, a, it is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to rise up the tribe of Jacob and to restore the 
preserved of Israel. I believe this is talking about the prophecy of the 144,000, which they don't realize that. They, they think it's talking about the entire nation of, 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 as a people. Okay, And I will give... This is what they're looking at. And I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles, that thou mayest be my salvation unto the ends of the earth. Not only are they waiting for a Messiah to come once they build this temple, but, they're, but they believe that salvation is going to come to the world. There's going to be a big revival coming place, and all the nations are going to come and worship their God. This is why they're getting ready to build this third temple. Do the research. It's all there. I'm not making this stuff up. Okay? Um... Uh, so let's look at this other scripture too, because this is very important why I'm bringing this up. Let's look at Isaiah chapter 2, verse 23. I'm sorry, uh, verse 2 and 3. Isaiah chapter 2, verse 2 and 3. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord, the Lord's house, shall be established in the, in the top of the mountains, and shall be exalted above the hills. All nations shall flow unto it, and many people shall go and say, Come ye, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, of the house of the God of Jacob, and will teach us the ways of the Lord. And we shall walk in his paths, and for out of Zion shall go forth the law of the Lord. So, this is going to happen when Jesus returns the third coming with the saints that he, he already raptured and the former saints and the and uh, those from Abraham's bosom <laughs> and when, when this is gonna happen in the millennial reign here okay but they think it's this so the deception that's coming in Israel the Antichrist standing in, standing in the temple that's gonna take place first so these scriptures they don't understand so when the Antichrist claims to be the Messiah standing in the temple, oh Jesus, claiming to be Yeshua, <laughs> uh, they're gonna they're gonna receive him. And the Bible says he, he establishes a covenant with them for seven year a seven year peace treaty. That's the mark of the beast. I'm sorry, it is what it is. Except for the hundred and forty four thousand. This is why I believe that uh, they turn against Israel. But anyways, I don't want to put the cart before the horse. I showed you these scriptures here. Let me prove to you that all of Israel isn't the nation of Israel, but the 144,000. Now, I'm going somewhere with this. This is a really good lesson. Please hang in there with me. I promise you'll see a picture that you haven't seen before. Uh, and uh, Romans, Romans chapter 2, verse 28 and 29. <laughs> okay, now, I want you to catch this. There's so much room for deception. The mentality that a lot of Christians and pastors and even the Jewish people have the, 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 the mentality for deception is already working, okay? For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision, which is outwardly in the flesh. In other words, he's not a Jew just because he's a Jew by lineage, by nature, just because he is a Jew, even though he's circumcised according to the law and the customs of Moses. But he is a Jew, which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart and the spirit and not of the letter, whose praise is not of men but of God. So what this is saying is that, let me read verse 29 in layman's terms. But, but this is a Jew, one who is sanctified, one which is one inwardly, that's sanctified in the heart by the spirit. And not legalistic according to the law. Do you see what I'm saying? So what I'm trying to get you... Well, Benny, that's talking about Christians. That's the church. We are Jews because we're grafted in. No, and let me back... Let me prove to you with another scripture that what I'm... My first interpretation is a true interpretation. Let's take a look at Romans chapter 9. Let's back this up with Romans chapter 9, shall we? This is talking about the 144,000 to whom there is no guile. They are the virgins. They are not indoctrinated with false doctrines, nor have they slept with women. I'm going to leave that alone for right now. Okay, uh, chapter 9. I don't know how I got the chapter 4. Chapter 9, starting at verse 5 and 8. Okay. Whose are the fathers? Now, I want you to catch this. Whose are the fathers? Who belongs to the Father? Okay. Whose are the fathers? And of whom, as concerning the flesh, Christ came, who is over all, God bless forever. Amen. Verse 6. 
Not as though the word of God hath taken of done effect, for they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. Now I want you to catch this. This is not talking about the body of Christ, Christians. This is talking about people in Israel. Okay. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham, even though they're the seed of Abraham. <laughs> Are they all children? But in Isaac shall thy seed be called. You have, there's two seeds. You have Ishmael and you have Isaac. God's only chosen the one. Oh, Jesus. These are the ones who have received. These are the ones. I don't want to get into why God did that because that's his business. That is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God, but the children of promise are counted for the seed. <sighs> I'm sorry, but I hear, I hear so much teaching in the past that those that are truly sanctified, that we are the Jews, we are considered Jews inwardly because we're grafted in. That's, you got to read the context of the scripture with other scripture comparing spiritual things with spiritual things in the Holy Ghost. All right. The rest of that chapter will confirm it, okay? So, um, so this is part of the deception, okay? So you have Christians and Jews praying for a temple to be built, okay? Excited about it, thinking it's a good thing, having no idea that uh, Jesus became the temple. He met up with John the Baptist in the, the wilderness, as to which, if we go to, um, thank you, Holy Ghost. If Let's go to Malachi. I want to show you something that has happened and something that has already happened. There's a reason for this. Now, I'm going somewhere with this that's going to just bless your socks off if you just hang with me. Or come back another day if you got to. I know it's a long video, but you got to hear this, please. I would pay the world to watch this if I could. <laughs> um, Malachi chapter 3. Malachi chapter 3, verse 1. Behold, I will send you my messenger, and he shall prepare the way. This is another one that's deceiving them. They believe that their Messiah, they, this is already happening. But they're thinking that this is going to happen when they build this temple. This is why there has to be a temple, and the Bible says there's going to be a third temple, even though we became the temple. Jesus Christ is that temple. At the right hand of the throne of the Father, Behold, I will send my messenger, which is John the Baptist, and he shall prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the new covenant. Whom you delight in, behold, shall come, saith the Lord. Okay. They think this is Elijah. Okay. Which he will come <laughs> uh, when the rapture takes place. But I'm going to get into that. All right. They believe that this hasn't happened yet. It's already happened. John the Baptist was the messenger. Remember what the scripture says is hang with me. And the Gospels, and Luke, it says that John the Baptist went forth in the spirit and power of Elijah. <laughs> That's why when the, when at the Mount, after the Mount of Transfiguration, Peter asked them, they said, uh, Elijah will come. And he said, Elijah has already came. And they've done whatever they wanted to do with him. And the scripture notes that they realized that Jesus was speaking of John the Baptist. <laughs> So this is a prophecy of, of, of John the Baptist meeting up with Jesus in the baptism, becoming that temple. Jesus being that final temple. Okay, And behold, I will send my messenger and shall prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek shall suddenly come to his temple. Oh, Jesus. They're waiting for this prophecy to come to pass and it's already happening. And they're... Plenty of room for deception for the Antichrist to show up and lead a world of deception causing... Now, I don't want to get ahead of myself now that i proved some scriptural points here. This is why I believe as part of the, the, the great deception, all Israel accepts the Antichrist covenant except the 144,000 to which all is true Israel is 144,000. We read that in Re Revelation chapter 7. All Israel is 144,000 out of those tribes. 
Okay. So Israel was always called the woman in the Old Testament. Okay. The true woman or the is in heaven. When Jesus rose up from the dead, he took all those in Abraham's bosom from the grave, from Adam all the way up to Jesus, rose up out of the grave after him and preached in the city. And when he ascended, he led captive captive. The Bible says they went to heaven. And with that in mind, they're all in heaven, which is the woman. Revelation chapter 12, it says, And behold, there was a wonder in heaven. The woman is in heaven. The wonder was in heaven. Oh, Jesus. The woman and her seed. If you look at that, when the man-child is caught up, the seed is left behind. you got to watch that video, Revelation chapter 12, storyline breakdown. You gotta watch it. It will tie into all the stuff I'm talking about. But why is this the the these other ones, other than the 144,000, the rest of the Jews? Why are they called the whorish woman? Okay, the whore Babylon. Why is this nation called the whore? Let alone the whore of Babylon. I want to show you something so we can understand something real quick. Let's look at Revelations. I'm almost done here, so. <laughs> um, let's look at Revelation, the 17th chapter, shall we? Let's take a look at Revelation, the, the 12th chapter. I want to I wanna bless you some more, can I? Revelation, the 17th chapter. My phone's going too slow, so I'll just quote it to you. And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talk with me, saying unto me, Come hither, and I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon the many waters. Verse 2, With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Who is this woman that caused the kings of the earth to become drunk, of the, and the inhabitants of the earth to become drunk with the wine of her fornication. What's the wine, and what's the drunkenness, and what's her fornication? <clears throat> I believe it's all of Israel except for the 144,000. They will influence the seven heads and ten horns. She's the woman that rides upon the beast of seven heads and ten horns. Let's uh, go down to verse uh, 7 real quick. And um, actually, let's go down to verse 6. Because this woman of seven heads and ten horns, the new one world order under the reign of Antichrist, will, as I talked about before, will persecute and behead and, and uh, persecute the saints. Okay, Revelation chapter 17 verse 6, And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Verse 7, And the angel said unto me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carries her, which hath the seven heads and ten horns. In other words, the cat's already been let out of the bag. The mystery's already been revealed to us, to the, serv to the servant John and to his prophets, Revelations 1.1. So what am I saying? Do today's pastors, prophets, teachers, and evangelists have enough of the piece of the puzzle, enough understanding of the scripture to know what's going on and not to be deceived? Or do some have a piece? And this one has a piece of the puzzle, and that has a piece of the puzzle, and that has a piece of the puzzle. <laughs> this is why the devil works so hard to bring such division in the body of Christ so that we don't receive each piece of the puzzle from each other. Because everyone's got a piece of the puzzle. Some have more than others. Some have very few. I believe the Lord's blessed me with quite a bit. But check this out. Let me confirm to you that this nation of Israel, aside from the 144,000, will lead a, a false revival and a worship to the beast. Let's take a look at... Um, <coughs> let's take a look at... Um, Let's go to Exodus chapter 19, verse 4, 9. Please bear with me. I want to bless you. Let's understand. Where it says, Revelation chapter 17, verse 2. 
with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Let's try to understand this biblical language. Let's try to understand this Hebraic literature, shall we? So we can get a better understanding of what's taking place here, so I can confirm to you that this is the nation of Israel causing this deception with Antichrist, except for the 144,000. This is why they flee into the wilderness. Exodus 19, verse 4 and 5. This is the Lord speaking concerning the time when God led Israel out of the hand of Egypt into the wilderness to worship God before the promised land so they can get the Ten Commandments and be married to God at Mount Sinai as her God being her husband. Revelations chapter... Now this is going to help us understand the word whorish woman, whore, what God means by the word whore, Horse woman or whoring after other gods, and we're going to understand why they are called the whore. You have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, and I remember all the plagues and stuff that took place, and Pharaoh's uh, and and Egypt did Pharaoh finally let the people go, and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you into myself. Eagle's wings. <laughs> we'll talk about the two wings that she was given. <laughs> this confirms something. I just got a break. I just got another revelation. <laughs> I'll talk about it another time, but this confirms something. What I believe. I think I might have already mentioned it. Now, therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then will I be a particular, and then you shall be a particular treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. And you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which thou spake unto the children of Israel. Speaking, being Moses, he re, Moses repeated those words that God spoke to the people. And Moses came, and Moses called for the elders of the people and laid before their faces all the words which the Lord commanded him. Verse 8, And all the people answered together and said, All that the Lord has spoken we will do. And Moses returned the words of the, of the people unto the Lord. And the Lord, and the Lord said unto Moses, Lo, I have come unto thee in a thick cloud, that the people may hear when I speak with thee, and believe thee forever. And Moses told the words of the people unto the Lord. In other words, when Moses said this, I'm pretty sure they felt the Holy Ghost. <laughs> I'm sure they felt a lot of God. <laughs> uh, they, they felt that cloud, you understand what I'm saying? Uh, which which rested upon the fivefold ministry today. Uh, as a, as we are the final temple, but anyways, um, so let's take a look at. I'm going somewhere with this. Just bear with me. If you want to get a better understanding of this, just hear me out. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 31. This is when God made that scripture I just read to you is when God made a covenant with Israel. Okay, and when you're married, there are laws that require faithfulness to the wedding vows. Do you see what I'm saying? Jeremiah 31, 32. Not according to the covenant that I have made with their fathers and the day that I took them by the hand to bring them uh, to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they broke, they break, although I was an husband unto them, saith the Lord. But this shall be a covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. Okay, um, so we see that according to the scripture that God had a covenant with them that they broke and that um, because of that covenant it says here, uh, although I was an husband unto her, now I'm, now I'm trying to, I'm going somewhere with this, let's go to Ezekiel 16 verse 8, I'm going to lay a few more scriptures down and then I'll knock the ball out of the park by the Holy Ghost, <laughs> all glory be to God, let's go to, um, Ezekiel 16, verse 8. Ezekiel 16, verse 8. 
Now when I passed by thee and looked upon thee, behold, thy time was a time of love. This is, remember when I passed by thee, remember we just read that when God spoke with Moses to get, to, to lay the words of God before the people when the people said that we receive it. Uh, this is what he's talking about. Behold, thy time was a time of love, and I have spread my skirt over thee and covered thy nakedness. I have swore unto thee and entered into a covenant with thee, saith the Lord God, and thou becomest mine. Okay, all right, let's look at Ezekiel 16, verse 2. Let's go to verse 2 real quick, shall we? Son of man calls Jerusalem to know her abominations. Let's find out what she did and how this is going to play a role in the beast system a little bit later. Okay, let's go to verse, verse 14, Ezekiel 16, 14 through 22. Let's look at Ezekiel 16, verse 14 through 22. We're still in uh, chapter 16 in Ezekiel. And the renowned went forth. In other words, where they renounced the covenant by through unfaithfulness. Let's go on. And when the renowned went forth, verse 14, the renowned went forth among the heathens, okay, uh, for thy beauty, for it was perfect through my comeliness, which I had put upon thee, saith the Lord God, but thou didst trust. But thou didst trust in thine own beauty and played the harlot. The word whorish and whore and harlot kind of go hand in hand uh, in the rabbinical perspective. Uh, the harlot, because of thine renown and proudest of thy fornication on every one that passes by, his it was. In other words, this is talking about fornication like we know. This is fornication against the covenant, for worshiping false. You're going to read here that they were worshiping false gods of the different surrounding nations, <coughs> that they were drawing them in because of their beauty that God had given to them, and they fornicated on God against false gods. Okay? And this was a spiritual fornication, and we're going to read this here, okay? Um, and of thy garments thou didst take, and deckest thy high places with diverse colors, and playeth the harlot thereupon. The like, the like thing shall not come, neither shall it be. Thou hast also taken thy fair jewels of my gold and of my silver, which I had given thee, and madest to thyself images of men, and didst commit whoredoms with them, verse, uh, I believe this is referring to them forming the statues, these other nations that came in, showed them how to worship their gods and form statues, and tooketh thy broidered garments, and covereth them, and thou hast set mine oil and mine incense before them. In other words, I've given you this stuff, and you set it before them. My meat also which I gave thee, fine flour and oil and honey, wherewith I fed thee. Thou hast even set it before them for I, for a sweet Savior, and thus it was, saith the Lord. In other words, and you did so. Okay. What a smack in the face, right? Everything God did, everything God blessed them with, they flaunted it. They, you know, they put on their makeup, did their nails, put on the fine, finest gold, jewelry, everything. God had really blessed Israel, and they go and they flaunt it to the nations and the nations of their gods and idols. Ezekiel 16, 26, let's skip to 26. Thou hast also committed fornication with the Egyptians as well, okay? With the Egyptians, thy neighbors great of flesh, and has increased thy whoredoms to provoke me to anger, saith the Lord. I threw in that last part, that saith the Lord part, but that's the Lord speaking, okay? Let's look at 28 and 29, I'm almost done. Thou hast played it the thou hast played the whore also, now you have just the word whore. Thou hast played the whore also with the Syrians, because thou was unsatirable. In other words, because you was not satisfied with this nation or that nation, you even did it with the Assyrians too. You played the whorelet with them. Verse 29, Thou hast moreover multiplied thy fornications in the land of Canaan and unto the Chaldea, and yet thou was not satisfied wherewith. God calls these acts of fornication unfaithfulness. 
as they greatly multiplied to the surrounding nations, unfaithful to God, fornicating on God with these idols, versus worshiping the true God and being a witness unto the nations. Okay, and that's found in Ezekiel 32. Ezekiel, I'm sorry, that's found in uh, Ezekiel 16:32, the same chapter. Let's look at verse 32. Let me confirm that the clarity of that in Scripture. Okay, verse 32. But as a wife, I want you to hear this. But as a wife that committeth adultery, which taketh, taketh strangers instead of her husband. Instead of her husband. Taken in strangers instead of her husband. We know that there was no sexual relationship with Israel and God. We know that. Because it says taken in strangers instead of her husband. This is speaking of the foreign. God sees when you worship other idols after having a covenant with God. He sees this unfaithful. When you worship other idols and draw your strength from your idols more than the true God. God sees that as unfaithful. God sees that as spiritual fornication. Do you get it? Now let's go back to Revelation, the 17th chapter, so we can understand why these remnant of Israelites are called the whore of Babylon and why they and, and what is Babylon. Okay, let's go to uh, Revelation. I'm, I'm finishing up with this here, so. Um, now we can under now that we see the language of the Bible, we saw the word whoring, whoring after other gods, we saw the word harlot, we saw they're all intertwined with having a covenant with God. You can't be the whore of Babylon, you can't be the whorish woman if you've never had a relationship with God. You have to have a marriage covenant first in order to become unfaithful to the you see what I'm saying? So if we look at Revelation, the 17th chapter. <coughs> and there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, talk with me, saying unto me, Come hither, and I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon the many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So she influences... The many water. Let me prove to you that the woman, still not convinced that the woman, the whore, is this nation of unfaithful Israelites. All right. Let's look at verse 1. And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vows and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, and I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon the many waters. She sits upon the many waters. What are the many waters? Let's look at verse 15. Okay. And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest, where the whore sitteth, are peoples, and multitudes, and nations, and tongues. You see that right there? That's the Mediterranean Sea. Notice it looks like a dragon, the beast that gave it its power. I'm going to get into that a little bit later. Okay? That's the seven heads of the nations. So that's the beast that once was. And it, yeah, well, that's the, yeah, that's the Roman Empire. But there was a beast before the Roman Empire. It was... Babylon's kingdom, Nebuchadnezzar, he's the rich, he's the beast. Go back and read Daniel chapter 2, and you'll find out that he's talking about that beast because he's telling Nebuchadnezzar that this will be in the last days when Jesus Christ returns and destroys it. The stone that came out of heaven that smotes the image. That's the original beast, okay? Yeah, that, that, trust me. That nation, that Roman Empire, oh yeah, it'll be back, but it's called, the original is called, it won't be back as the Roman Empire. It's going to be back as Babylon. That's why it's called Mystery Babylon, okay? <laughs> they tell us the name of it, Babylon. <sighs> Nebuchadnezzar's kingdom, that's the beast that once was and is and shall be of seven heads and ten horns. Ten horns are ten additional kingdoms. I don't want to get into that just yet. But let me confirm to you, let's go to, uh, well, let me show, let me prove to you that this nation of Israel is the woman, okay? The woman is also known as the great city, okay? I'm going somewhere with this. This woman is also known as a great city. Revelation 17, 8 says, And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. Now I'm going somewhere with this. Let's look at chapter 11, verse 8. 
It speaks of the, the two witnesses. I know for sure without a shadow of doubt that one of them is Elijah. Okay? Elijah will come and restore all things. Okay? So, during this time... Or I'll get into. I'm not going to get into the time when I believe that's going to happen. But when Elijah comes with the other prophet and brings these plagues, and I believe that they will show up when the wrath of God begins to be poured out. They'll be speaking and declaring, and the angels will release that. But my point is that, um, as you know, that they were preaching in Israel, and I believe that they will re bring restoration and help the 144,000 in a way that I can't quite explain just yet, but I believe I'm going to be doing a video on that. Well, according to this verse, after they finished their testimony, after they finished the testimony, the beast came upon them and killed them, and their bodies lay in the streets for three and a half days. It says, and their dead bodies shall lie in the streets of the great city. Remember, the woman is called the great city. The whore, the woman which thou sawest, okay? The, remember, we, we read that in chapter 17. The woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over. The woman is called the great city, the whore of Babylon, okay? Let me read. And their dead bodies shall lie in the streets of that great, of the great city, which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. You can't run from that. That the woman is the unfaithful remnant of Israel. Okay, so there's a great deception coming. They're getting ready to build the temple. The Antichrist is already on the earth today, getting ready to uh, lead about a deception. Okay, be not deceived. What is coming? So uh, let's go back to uh, chapter 17, so I can finish this thing up real quick. There came one of the seven angels, which had the seven veils, talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, and I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon the many waters. The judgment, the wrath of God is coming upon those, coming upon, starting with the mark of the beast, starting with the beast system, you know, from the... T That's why the 144,000 had to get a seal of protection in their head, because they were left behind awaiting for the third coming of Jesus with the rapture saints. That's found in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 10, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in all things, both in heaven and on earth, together in him. Okay? Let me keep reading. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication, she helps this horse woman causes and influences the nations of this world to accept the mark of the beast, to get drunk off of the wine of her fornication with the Antichrist. Okay. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. The wealth of Israel at this time will be so great, not to mention Israel is becoming very great right now in wealth and prosperity. Okay, Not to mention a lot of the, uh, the, the different <laughs> Israel's making a call for the nations of the earth, ten, ten kingdoms of the earth, to set up their embassy. Oh Jesus, we need to be praying. Man, when do they be praying that this deception gets exposed because it's coming? Will you be deceived? <laughs> and upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery of Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. She's a mother of harlots because her daughters is the local church, the fallen away church. Oh, Jesus. Not all local churches are falling away. There's some good churches out there. Uh, <laughs> Verses 6, And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. And the angel and the angel said unto me, Wherefore did it thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carries her, which hath the seven heads and ten horns. And the beast that thou sawest was, and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit. And they that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not found written in the book of life. <laughs> From the foundation of the world, when they behold the beast that was, and is not, and yet is. 
Uh, and here is the mind which has wisdom, the seven heads or seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> and there are seven kings, five are fallen, one is, and the other is not yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. <laughs> and the beast that was and is, even he is the eighth, and is of the seventh, and goeth into perdition. This is speaking of... The beast as this king that once was and is and shall be. <laughs> Verses 12. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast are ten kings which have received no kingdom as yet, but will receive power as kings one hour with the beast. There are ten kings who are nations, but it says they don't have a kingdom yet. No, no, they don't have this kingdom yet. <laughs> but in one hour, they established this. Okay? The beast of seven heads is the seven nations surrounding the Mediterranean Sea. The ten, the ten, uh, the ten toes that Daniel was talking about. The ten horns are ten additional, or ten altogether. I think ten additional, ten additional kings. Not a hundred percent sure yet. What are your answers? Please leave them in the comment. I'm open for a discussion. I'm still learning and growing and seeking God for more revelation. I believe that God can speak to you just like He talks to me according to the scriptures. Verse, verse 13, these have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. Verse 13, these shall make war with the lamb and the lamb shall overcome them. For he is Lord of lords and king of kings and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. And he saith unto me, the waters which thou sawest with the horse cities are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues and the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast these shall hate the whore and shall make her naked and i'm sorry shall make her desolate and naked and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire in other words i believe when the rapture takes i believe the headquarters of this beast system will start in babylon and the area of iraq when the, when the rapture takes place and the 144,000 receive their Messiah, they will recognize this, the beast will recognize this remnant and say, wait a minute, you got a covenant with me. What are you doing worshiping the, this, this other God called Jesus? They turn against the whore for it, overthrow the, the city of Israel, and set up an image that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. And when the 144,000 see this image you worship, it says in the Torah, I don't worship any other image, they will see this, and as a result, they will flee into the wilderness. For God has put in their hearts to fulfill His will, and to agree, and give their kingdom unto the beast, until the words of God shall be fulfilled. In other words, you already made a covenant with me. We own you. Are you seeing what I'm saying? And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. Let's talk about the beast that thou sawest. Revelation chapter 13, verse, verse 1. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads a name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet was as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. That was verse 2. This is verse 3. <laughs> and I saw one of his heads as it was wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. Verse 4. And they worshipped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? Okay. <laughs> verse 5 says, And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things, and blasphemy and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. That's three and a half years. I want to, I'm going somewhere with this. Remember Daniel when he Daniel chapter seven when he talks about these kingdoms this, of seven heads and ten toes. Um, well, it was four beasts, but when it talks about the ten toes, it talks about a little horn will suddenly appear before them. The seven heads and ten toes come together. This beast system, the world marvels after it, and then the Antichrist suddenly appears because it says 
And it was given unto him, who? This beast of seven heads and ten horns, this beast that once was. And it was given unto him, a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue forty two months. And he opened his mouth against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle, and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not found written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have an ear, let him hear. That's woman too, because woman is in man. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Let me just stop right here real quick before I go on to the second beast here. People say this all the time. The Antichrist will have a head wound and be healed and the world will wonder after it. Not talking about that. It's the beast that once was, which had been wounded by a sword. Okay? The beast has how many heads? Seven heads. One of his heads were wounded unto death. And his deadly wound was healed. The beast that once was. Remember Nebuchadnezzar, the statue of, of that beast. He Nebuchadnezzar, I'm sorry, Nebuchadnezzar was told by Daniel, did it? He was the head of gold. He was the headquarters originally, which is in Iraq. But Iraq, by the way, that's where I got that from. You are the head of gold. Of course, the whore would become that head of gold because they adorn her with gold. <laughs> Anyways, you are the head of gold. And one of the heads was wounded unto death. This is why the beasts don't exist. What happened to Nebuchadnezzar's kingdom? It was overthrown, if you know the story, by a sword. Okay? If you cut the head off a body, the body dies. The body divides into independent parts and rots and decays. Or, But if you heal the head, bring the head back, the body comes together with it. The beast that once was a... The head of the beast was wounded to death. It didn't exist anymore. But because the head wound, the capital, was resolved, the seven heads came back. That's the what causes the world to wonder after the beast. And I hope you got that. So get that Antichrist having a head wound stuff out of your head. That's not what the scripture is saying. Out of the, 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 the seven heads of the dragon, the seven heads and ten, the seven heads, all those nations exist today except for one. Babylon. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Think about it. If you look at the seven heads upon the beast, they all exist. Syria, uh, Egypt. Uh, if, you, if you go into it, they all exist except for the one. I want you to think about that. And they worship the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. See? And they worship the beast, saying he was like unto the beast who was able to make war with him. Okay, let me skip down to after I was talking about it. It was giving him power to make war with the saints until they overcome them. And they were led into captivity and killed with the sword. Verses 11. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb and spake as a dragon. I do believe this is the false prophet. I do believe this is one of the popes. But it's more than that. There's two horns here. Remember, the ten horns which I saw are ten kings. Horns are symbolized as kings. And beast is not only a nation, but beast is plural for nations. The beast that thou, the beast that thou sawest, of seven heads and ten horns, this is the second beast. It says, And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns. Like Notice it's coming up out of the earth. It was already there. And he had two horns like a lamb, and spake as a dragon. I believe this is the Pope and the, its followers. And the other horn is America. Now, I believe this beast will not come on the scene until after the rapture. Okay? <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I could be wrong about that, but I believe America is this beast that will come later on. If the whore can't influence the nations... They'll use a second beast to cut your head off or take the mark. <laughs> if you don't passionately through religion accept the beast, then you'll get your head chopped off unless you worship the beast or his image. And he exercises all the power. Now I want you to catch this second beast, the power of the second beast. This is another reason why I believe it's America or will become America. America, I believe, is one of the most powerful countries. But in this peace agreement, 
it will have power to exercise all the powers of the first beast. All the armies of these nations will be combined together with the army of the second beast. And he exercises all the power of the first beast and causes them that dwell on the earth therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. Okay, of course this is the worship of the devil and the antichrist, but it's the worship of this beast system and its totality. Because look what it says. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire to come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. They didn't have jets and nuclear powers when John the Revelator saw this. He didn't know what he's looking at. There's no nation that can call fire down from heaven like America. There's no nation that has armies, uh, an air force base in every continent, in every area of the sea, of the ocean. There's. I'm just saying. This is that's a good point. And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the bees, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. Artificial intelligence is what I think this is, and it's going to govern the money, the, the new global economy, the new global currency that's going to be at that time. It could be the Bitcoin. That's not the only reason why I stay away from the Bitcoin. You get involved in the Bitcoin, you're saying that the American dollar is not good enough. Don't betray our dollar. Stay faithful to this, this structure. It was founded on the Bible. Okay? All right. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. First of all, this imagery... You've heard of Sophia, right? I know you're saying, oh, come on. You never know. I'm not saying that she's it. She could, there could be a final upgrade when this happens. But it says, it says right here, and to deceive is them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles that he, which he had to, which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and to live. This is the abomination that causes Israel, the 144,000, to flee. They recognize their Messiah. They've kept the Torah. They're not going to uh, worship any other image. But when they see this idol worship set up in the temple, this I believe it's a it could be a hybrid. It could be artificial intelligence slash man slash animal. Who knows? There's no telling. And I believe that those that take the mark of the beast in their head or in their forehead, there's going to be some new technology, this new beast system is going to be released, and that's going to be the main server. I'm just saying. And he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom, let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. Y'all have a blessed day. God bless you. I love you. Like and subscribe. Keep me up in prayer. Please leave your comments. Help me out. Give me a scripture. I know I'm hearing from God some words. So don't throw me under the bus. Don't throw the baby out of the bath water. Help a brother out. If you're hearing from God and you got a rhema revelation to add to the piece of the puzzle, shout out to me. Okay? Um, God bless you. I love you. And stay strong in the word. Be not deceived. Keep believing. And watch out for this coming deception. When you see this beast system coming together, be not deceived when you hear about this revival taking place in Israel. Be not deceived. I love you and God bless you. Me and my wife are praying for you. Take care.